you know, there's a few different types of Chiari malformations. And the one that you've been hearing most about, I'm sure this past uh, series has been the Chiari one, which is the caudal displacement of the uh, cerebellar tonsils. Uh, there's Chiari two, which is herniation of the cerebellar vermis, not the tonsils, but the vermis. So that's the central midline cerebellar structure into the foramen magnum or through it, uh, the brainstem and the fourth ventricle all sort of migrate uh, down through. There's the Chiari three malformation, which is herniation of the cerebellum and the brainstem, typically into a, uh, an encephalocele, which is an outpouching or hernia of the contents of the, uh, the brain into a sac uh, posteriorly. And uh, Chiari four, which is represented by uh, cerebellar hypoplasia. Uh, you may hear other terminologies like Chiari 0, Chiari uh, you know, 0.5, 1.5, etc. It kind of relates to um, gradations of the Chiari 1 malformation. And I actually don't use that uh, terminology myself. I keep it kind of simple and, and just say it's a, you know, let's say significant Chiari malformation or it's a, a mild Chiari malformation. So um, this is um, kind of the stuff we're talking about here. Okay, so just in diagrammatic form, this is what happens, uh, normal situation on this schematic. And then with the Chiari 1 malformation, you can see the cerebellar tonsils uh, that are herniating through, the crowding at the foramen magnum level, and the generation of um, backup of the cerebrospinal fluid into the spinal cord, and that's called a, a syrinx, and hence gives the name of the condition, which is syringomyelia. There's Chiari 2, Chiari 3, and Chiari 4, all displayed there for you. I'll have a, a better image of the Chiari 2 malformation to show you subsequently in this uh, presentation. Uh, this is Chiari 3, which is herniation into a large uh, posterior kind of um, uh, meningocele or encephalocele as shown here. And this uh, Chiari 4 represents um, the cerebellar hypoplasia. You know, for all intents and purposes, these latter two, I don't um, see very often. None of us does. They're pretty rare conditions. Uh, but Chiari 1 and Chiari 2 um, are the most common. And Chiari 1 is way more common nowadays than Chiari 2, given the fact that uh, spina bifida, at least in the developing world, is um, a vanishing disorder and is something that is seen less and less. When I was um, at your level, so when I was a medical student, and this would have been 1979, 1980, so long before you guys were born, or probably most of you, um, the incidence of spina bifida and uh, neural tube defects at sick kids was uh, extremely high. So there would be at least one patient, sometimes two patients coming in with, with uh, myelomeningocele's and um, coming in with carry two malformations every week of the year. So that would mean like over a hundred new admissions um, for children with myelomeningocele. Uh, now, if we see 10 a year, so, you know, a 10th of that uh, number, we're, that's a lot. Now, so it's, it's really dropped off. And so uh, for myself, I had a lot of experience when I first started my clinical practice, closing myelomeningocele's and then dealing with the Chiari 2 malformation that you see here. But uh, more recently, um, it's pretty rare that I would close a um, neural tube defect and or see a Chiari 2 malformation. Uh, we are actively involved in fetal myelomeningocele repair at Sick Kids Hospital. So we do have a program for that. Um, and it, it is interesting. That's probably equal numbers now that we're treating, if not more so, um, in utero, so fetal uh, repairs versus kind of open repairs of, um, of um, myelomeningocele. So uh, the world has changed a lot. And I suspect that those numbers of in utero and fetal repairs are gonna drop off uh, even further over time for a variety of reasons. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.